Hello my little Willies and happy St. Patrick's Day! In today's tutorial you will learn how to knit an infinite cowl or scarf in Irish moss stitch step by step. Besides showing how to knit the Irish moss, a four row repeat stitch pattern, reversible, identical on both sides and it doesn't curl, I'm sharing an invisible way to join two balls of wool yarn. For this project, you will need 400 grams, 400 meters, of 100% wool yarn, 13 US size knitting needles or 9 millimeters. I'm using circulars because they're more comfortable for me, but you can use straight needles. Also, darning or tapestry needle, scissors, and rule or measurement tape. You will find, as usual, the reading instructions on my website, sewwoolly.net. There is a link for you below this video on the description box. If you would like to knit the infinite cowl using a thicker or finer yarn, I have a link for you there on my website to a tutorial that explains you step by step what to do, how to calculate how many stitches to cast on and how much yarn you will need. The gauge required for this pattern is a 4x4 four four inches or 10x10 10 10 centimeters square knitted in Irish moss stitch equals 13 stitches and 15 rows. The measurements for this cowl are 13 inches by 65 inches or 33 centimeters by 165 centimeters. Firstly, we need to cast on 43 stitches. I'm going to cast on a little bit less, but it has to be an odd number of stitches anyway. First row, the repeat is knit one, purl one, and repeat. Remember, you can find the written instructions on my website, sewwoolly.net. There is a link for you below this video on the description box. So, knit one, purl one. Knit one, purl one. And repeat to the end of the row. If you need continental, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Knit one, purl one. Ending the row with knit one, but only on this first row, I always knit the last stitch through the back loop so you don't get a huge stitch there. Second row. The repeat is purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, and repeat. Purl one, knit one. Purl one, knit one. 
if you need continental, pearl one, net one, pearl one, net one, and repeat to the end of the row. And in the row with pearl one. Third row, it's exactly the same as row two. So the repeat is pearl one, net one, pearl one. Net one, pearl one, net one, and repeat to the end of the row. End in the row with pearl one. Fourth and last row, as per row one. It's exactly the same as the first row, so the repeat is net one, pearl one, net one, pearl one, and repeat. When you see the V, you know you have to knit. When you see the bump, you know you have to purl. That's the easiest way to see where you are. Net one, pearl one. And keep repeating to the end of the row. When there is only one stitch left, knit this last stitch. These four rows create the pattern. Repeat them until you reach the required length, 65 inches or 165 centimeters. Now I'm going to show you how to join two balls of wool in an invisible way. It won't work if you are knitting with acrylic or something synthetic, for example. It only works if the fiber you're using contains at least 75 to 80% of wool yarn. And it doesn't work if the yarn has some superwash treatment. Okay, when you are about to finish the ball of yarn, take 10 centimeters or 4 inches of the tail and split it in two. Now, cut one of the two pieces. Take the new ball of yarn and repeat the process. Make sure they uh, have more or less the same length. Now place them, both split yarns, in the palm of your hand. Spray with water. Maybe that was too much, not too much, but not too little. And now rub your hands together, backwards and forwards, until you feel the heat. Repeat, 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 until the wool feels dry and the fibers has fused together. 
the heat and the friction make the fibers get fused together. When it's dry, you can continue knitting as before. This trick also works with alpaca, cashmere, and the result is fantastic. This is the last time I joined a ball. And that was the first time, so no more knots. When finished, we're going to bind off, working each stitch, doing the opposite as what we see. I am binding, binding off after a row four. So if I see a bump, which is a poor stitch, I'm going to knit that stitch. If I see the V, I'm going to purl. So knit one, purl one, and pass the stitch over and repeat. Knit one and pass the stitch over. Now comes a V. I purl that stitch and pass the stitch over. Now comes a bump or a purl. I knit that stitch and pass the stitch over. So keep repeating to the end of the row. If you need continental, it's the same. When you see the V, purl and pass the stitch over. When you see the bump, knit and pass the stitch over. And repeat to the end of the row. When you get to the last stitch, pull this last loop and cut the yarn leaving a tail twice the width of the scarf and pull it through this last loop. And now we're going to sew up the scarf. So place it on the table, fold it in half. Thread your darning or tapestry needle. And we are going to place the two ends, one in front of the other. But we have to turn that one. So keep the, the left one as before and turn around the right one. They are in front of each other or side to side. I don't like to sew from the top to the bottom. I like to sew from the bottom to the top. So I just turn it around I'm going to do it again so you see it and start joining these two ends. First, we have to join the scarf in this most exterior part, most exterior part of the corner. And now we're going to place the tapestry needle below the line of stitches that are just below the 
cast the bind of edge. Sometimes you, you will see a V, place the darning needle below this V, and when you see the bump, place the darning needle below the bump. Always from one side and next from the other side. And repeat to the end. Always check the end, the top of the sides, because you don't want to take more fabric of one side than from the other. When you get to the top, we have to do the same, we have to join these last two corners. Twice, I prefer to do it twice, at the beginning and at the end. And now we have to take this yarn far away from the edge. So place it below a purl stitch and then below one leg of a V-stitch. And repeat. Always trying to get it far from the edge. It's nice to change directions. because it will make it harder to go away. And when you're finished, cut the yarn, leaving a tail around 10 centimeters long or four inches, split the tail in two pieces, and now, if we want to be ultra sure, we can make a knot, double knot. And you can hide the little knot below the apparel stitch. And repeat the same for the little tail from the custom edge. And that's it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure for me. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Hugs and happy knitting.